I think you and me and many of our viewers agree upon the following point. The main agenda that is going to be discussed there, if not the Turkish-Armenian protocols, it is going to be the Turkish-Armenian relations. Now, after all, the State Department will get the right based on the type of the people or the type of the organization that are invited will get the right to say that the majority of the Armenian Americans with, with which we met are in support of the protocols and the, and the Turkish-Armenian relations. Although really the majority is in support of the Turkish-Armenian relations, but not the Turkish-Armenian protocols because they're, they're not based on uh, justice, they're not based on the values of uh, freedom and justice and you know uh, the rights of people to exist so what do you think well you're, you're, you're absolutely right this is there's an element of theater here uh, which mm -hmm. is that the um, uh, the State Department you know uh, is, is trying to create a, 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 an illusion a sort of a fake impression uh, that they have the wind at their back that the Armenian American community supports uh, their views now of course uh, they know that's not true and uh, privately, uh, that's been explained to us many times. They know the Armenian community is outraged. Uh, they are they are gratified, though, that they've been able to secure the public support of the leadership of several organizations. Um, as someone who travels around the country and talks to uh, literally hundreds of Armenian Americans uh, every week, uh, I've come to understand that even the memberships of these organizations do not support the protocols. The protocols is very, very um, uh, thin, and a narrowly based support mm -hmm. in our community. Um, and uh, we've seen that. If you look at all the metrics, look at the, the metrics, look at the number of people that have sent letters into the administration through our website in the thousands of protesting the protocols, the numbers of people who have attended um, protests, uh, you know, uh, two protests of more than 10,000 people in Los Angeles, a protest in uh, New York City as well. Look at the articles that have appeared in the Armenian American press, not just the uh, those you know who are more identified with the ANC, but just the, all the Armenian American press. The articles are uh, run ten to one against the protocols. If you look at the events, the Obviously. gatherings, the panel discussions, uh, the, the overwhelming majority uh, of these events, even those held in venues that are uh, more closely identified with the groups publicly uh, endorsing the protocols, uh, the, the, the people who attend these events are aligned. You know, um, ninety to ten, eighty to twenty against the, uh, the protocols. Now, now we know this, and, um, and that's not a surprise. Uh, the State Department knows this as well. They realize that this is a vulnerability, that they are um, pushing a policy that is grossly offensive to our Indian Americans, that has outraged our community. Uh, if you look at this from a political perspective, you have the White House, which uh, came into office with a, with a series of you know, very uh, uh, clearly stated pledges uh, to the Armenian American community and has really let them down and, and has disappointed us on, on so many levels on in terms of genocide recognition, on assistance levels, on military aid parity, and on the cut of peace talks. We've had a lot of disappointments, uh, so I think that the administration also has an interest in trying to, um, you know, uh, divert people's attention from what, that, those broken promises and uh, to uh, sort of do a little theater to show, well, here, you know, we're going to march out uh, some folks who are going to, who are going to, um, uh, endorse the, the protocols, we'll give them a little pat on the head, we'll give them some, uh, some uh, place of privilege, and, uh, and the sad reality is there, there are those in our community who will, will trade an awful lot for a photo opportunity, and who will sometimes give away so much uh, to, to, to secure a place at the table, that their place at the table uh, really loses its value to the community. Uh, we're in Washington, uh, not for the sake of being in Washington, we're in Washington to make a difference. We're in Washington to, to reflect our community's views. The second an Armenian organization loses sight of that fact and starts thinking that the inside the beltway game is uh, the, the, the end game, is the, is the result, is the, is the aim of their activism, they've really, they really lost their moorings, and I think that it's a time to recalibrate. And I think that um, this is, I think, a moment for uh, those leadership groups, the, the sort of leadership of these organizations to look around them and to, to, to look into their own organizations, to look at the, at the regional leadership, at the local leadership, at the grassroots, and the, you know, if, if they're honest with themselves, they're going to see that there's just this overwhelming opposition to these protocols, and, um, and uh, that cheerleading uh, may win some plaudits and, and some applause um, uh, and foggy bottom at the State mm -hmm. Department and the White House, but that's really uh, not what we're in Washington for. We're there uh, to represent our community's views and values and to move the ball forward. Um, so I think that's, that's, this is 
a chance, I think, for um, our entire community, especially those who put their name behind the protocols, to really reevaluate um, where we stand. Now, the administration is creating an illusion, and they know it is an illusion, but unfortunately that is for, uh, I would say, maybe for exterior and foreign usage and consumptions. And uh, on the other hand, cheerleading might get some applaud, might get some enthusiasm, but it won't secure any winning. And I think this is a fact, we all know it. Anyways, Adam, now there is something that has to be done against this situation. And I assume there is something already being done. And what else could be done to change the situation, to correct the situation? And of course, uh, what everyone else could do. I mean, the organizations or any member of the Armenian American community. Well, I, I would say that the, all the Armenian organizations, the leadership uh, of all the organizations, uh, needs to be in touch with the Department of State and to, to say that, you know, we have a traditional leadership group. We've uh, acted um, as a team uh, for, for decades, and we don't appreciate, you know, this uh, effort to selectively choose from among these groups based on who supports or doesn't support the protocols. So I think that's an important message that needs to be sent. Uh, our chairman, ANCA Chairman Ken Hachigan, sent uh, an open letter today to all the Armenian American organizations mm -hmm. explaining uh, the history of our requests for a community-wide meeting, ex uh, explaining our disappointment that that has not uh, been proposed uh, in, in the Secretary's first iteration, in her first proposal for how to formulate this meeting. It's, it's not very balanced. You know, we respectfully recommend that you take a second look at that and, you know, uh, uh, reconsider. You know, maybe uh, come back with a more broad-based meeting that will more accurately reflect our community and more um, more uh, accurately reflect where the community stands in the protocols. Uh, at the grassroots level, people just need to, uh, if they're members of these organizations, they need to get on the phone mm -hmm. uh, or email the leaderships of these groups and say, you know, do, get, do the right thing. Talk to the State Department. I think that's a, it's a healthy thing. I think that... Uh, uh, in the ANC, we appreciate hearing from our grassroots. We learn uh, from um, the suggestions, from the praise, uh, from the criticisms. It's, it's open process. Uh, the, the other organizations, I think, would benefit as well. Uh, uh, the diocese, the Knights of Archon, the Assembly, and the HGU, I think, would, would, would benefit. I think the leaders would appreciate hearing from their grassroots on the subject. Uh, Mano, there's another aspect to this, which is that many members of Congress have weighed in uh, about the need to consult mm -hmm. with the Armenian American community. Uh, and they're basically expressing concern as to why the administration, you know, uh, a year in, essentially, uh, a year into their term, has not held any meaningful dialogue at the senior levels with our community. Um, Senator Harry Reid uh, sent a very powerful letter, sure. to Secretary Clinton, making the point that the Armenian community had not uh, been uh, meaningfully consulted. Um, I think that, you know, that was a very helpful thing. I think that the Armenian community and the Armenian National Committee of Nevada help bring that about and certainly right. brought it to his attention. So I think that talking to legislators as well is always